Hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo with bo -O, as I turn down some of the tunes. And hopefully those tunes got you kind of ready to go a little bit. Got you excited, pumped up, uh, ready for the Devo this morning. It's Wednesday. So what do they call it? Hump day, right? Kind of whoop, going over the work week. And uh, we're going to get into the book of Numbers, chapter 16 today. And I am at the... Uh, office studio as you could tell I got a dual screen going on so you guys could see me up at the top corner too a little different angle which is kind of cool um, and um, you know I got my Bible in front of me right there and uh, ready to go so Laura good morning Paula good morning and uh, we hope to have our other wonderful people in the comment corner join us really soon so that'll be super cool and uh, we're gonna get going so you could always check out the archives at where? Bo Willette. So right there. Bo Willette. Right there. Over there. Right over there. Bo Willette. You can go there to my personal YouTube page. And there it's got all the, um, you know, all the archives, all the different things that we've done. And, w you know, we've gone through quite a bit together already. Gosh, can you believe it? Uh, COVID started. You know, the world went in crazy lockdown. By the way, there's some good books that have come out on the lockdown and the situation and and kind of what it ha what has happened and there are some amazing critiques that are out there right now um on uh what what the world did and the ramifications of what the world has done um and uh, we're all feeling the pinch for sure uh it's definitely a different climate uh businesses are super struggling to keep things going uh, keep the flow of business going, um, restaurants, uh, supply chains. I mean, just the list goes on and on and on and on. But, um, yeah, some really interesting books. Um, you guys will have to find them out yourself, check them out, but you can also uh, check out this live on YouTube as well. You can always go uh, live on YouTube. I finally figured out how to go live on YouTube from the the office studio. So now from this studio, I'm able, which is just my office, is it, it's it's not my office it's just the the church's office I'm, i just get to use it man that's for sure so i shouldn't use that personal my i mean yeah i've been doing this here for a, a long time but but it, it ain't my office man it's the it's the lord's and the people's office the churches so i just get to use this for uh, ministry purposes but anyway we're able to go live so you can if something happens on facebook you can always go to youtube so leviticus or numbers sorry we already did Leviticus, number 16. A lot of people are in rebellion from Moses in the book of Numbers. Leadership, you know, do I, how do I treat the leaders of the church? Uh, do I diss them? Do I speak ill towards them? Where's my heart at? Do I got a bitter heart this morning where I listen to a sermon by someone? I go, gosh, man, that was horrible, man. What kind of blah, blah, blah. Do I, where's my heart at? Uh, man, why hasn't God got me there? Why hasn't God got me here? That kind of heart. Now, Korah, the son of Ishhar, this is chapter 16, okay? It says, Korah, the son of Ishhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, with Dathan and Abraim, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men now this is Im Im important Levi and Reuben are the names that kind of stick out because Levi and Reuben they've had a little bit of an issue those those two back in the day um, in the book of Genesis uh, we've had some issues with those two sons of of Jacob uh, and uh, now their descendants kind of rise up to the occasion once again and they uh, have something to say to Moses, right? They, they, they have, they stood up. They, they, and now these are relatives, by the way, of Moses. It's not like Moses doesn't know these people, man. They're cousins. I mean, you know, they, they're relatives. Isn't that, a, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Have you ever had like any kind of backbiting from relatives at all in your life? Have, has that ever happened to you where, Man, it seems like in your own family, things just don't work out too well. It seems like there's commotion or just strife and yuck and anger. 
just lack of compassion kind of thing. It says, They took men and they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel, 250 leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. So this is like their their peeps, man. Their little tribal government leaders that are going to bat and they're going to go up and say, hey, Moses, right? They gathered together against Moses and Aaron and said to them, you take too much upon yourselves for all the congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? Why are you doing this, man? I mean, you think you, you guys you guys say you guys are holy and hanging out with God and everything like that, but the whole congregation is holy. We're all holy, man. You know, come on. I mean, doesn't that sound good? What a good argument. I mean, th I, I think it sounds super like, you know, how can you argue with with uh, Korah and and these other people, right? They sound so right. Like, hey, aren't we all holy? Aren't we all like, aren't we all child children of God? Like, can't we all be used by God? Like, what's the deal with you and Aaron and your guys' roles? Like, you guys seem to have like this leadership role. You know, and you guys are telling us, hey, this is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord said. Well, hey, man, how about what the Lord said to me? And how about that? Like, you know, uh, have you ever kind of had that kind of, it sounds good, right? That kind of interaction it sounds pretty right, but it's wrong, right? You know, one thing I get off this right off, or kind of just smack right in the face is that if everybody's leading, then that becomes confusing. Not everybody can lead, right? If you have, you know, five captains on the court in basketball and they're all they're all assigning plays. Hey, we're doing play one, we're doing play two, one, two, three, four, five. Everybody's saying a different leadership what they're supposed to do, then it becomes confusing. One person has to be the leader, right? In baseball, you have a third base coach and a first base coach. You don't have two third base coaches and two first base coaches. Now, if you don't know baseball, that might seem a little confusing. But it, it would be confusing if you're running around the bases and you're looking at one of the coaches, right? Say the third base coach because you're running towards third base. And you have two coaches. One of them says, slide. The other one says, stand. Right? You're what do you do? You're like <laughs> you know, do you stand, do you slide? Like what do you do? Right? It's confusing. When people say we want both of us to be the leaders, and eh, it can't work that way. It can't work in that way. We have to have one leader that's leading the ship. Someone where someone they're la they're kind of the buck stops here. This is the deal. This is what we're doing. And if you don't like that, then you're kind of on the side of Korah. You're on the side of this rebellion, right? Hey, aren't we all holy? Aren't we all, you know, people of God? I mean, don't we all hear from the Lord? You know, aren't we all holy? Every one of them? Uh, then why do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? So Moses heard it. He fell on his face. Now, I like this, too. Uh, when problems arise in the family, maybe the best thing I need to do is just fall on my face before the Lord. Maybe that's the right posture to when conflict comes. Maybe it's not so much the stand and fight, but maybe it's the kneel and pray. Um, you know, has anybody seen that movie War Room? You know, that that movie that came out, I don't know, a couple years ago about a lady who just goes into her closet literally and writes out some prayer requests and she just tacks it to the wall. She just sits in there and prays and that's her little prayer time and she calls it her war room, right? Going to battle in a sense, praying. But I love that. How does she deal with family conflict? She went right into her closet. And isn't that what Jesus said? Hey, when you pray, don't go into, you know, don't do it publicly. Don't m let everybody know that you're praying, you know, make it s s such a show. 
It doesn't have to be a show. You don't have to pray in that kind of way where it's like, oh, well, I'm on air. I'm going to pray right now so you guys can see me pray. I can go into my quiet place where it's just me and the Lord, and the Lord sees what is done in secret. He knows what is done. It doesn't mean that public prayer is wrong. It just certainly means that there is definitely a way that pride certainly can creep into our hearts, and we want people to see us as people of prayer or holy people, right? So we kind of have this self-exaltation. So, you know, when family matters come to you, what do you do? Do you hit your face like Moses did, fell on his face? Or do you do you retaliate? Oh, good question for me this morning. And he spoke to Korah and all his company saying, tomorrow morning the Lord will show who is his and who is holy and will cause him to come near to him. Uh, again, that c- come near, offering, right? Whenever you hear that idea to draw near, to come near to God, think of offering, right? You know, coming close. You know, God has established the way I- it is to bring people near to God, and that is through the offering, right? Korah is people that they worked in the temple, I mean, in the tabernacle. These people were workers. They were Levites, but they wanted more, right? Right? And it says, uh, God's going to choose and says, do this. Take censers, Korah, and all your company. So they take a censer, right? And it says, put fire in them. So put things in there, light it on fire. Put incense in it, you know, them before the Lord. So it's this this censer uh, that they were to bring before the Lord. And tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord chooses is the Holy One. You take too much upon yourselves, you sons of Levi. So Moses says this, you take too much upon yourselves. You guys are going too far. You guys are going too far. Then Moses said to Korah, hear now, you sons of Levi. Is it a small thing to you that the Lord of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the work of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to serve them? And he has brought you near to himself. Again, he has brought you near. And to you and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you. And are you seeking the priesthood also? Therefore, you and all your company are gathered together against the Lord and what is Aaron that you complain against him. Heavy words to the, 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 the sons of Levi here, right? Okay, Levi's been dead hundreds and hundreds of years, but his descendants are on the scene. They, they've been given a, a place in the service uh, of the tabernacle in the wilderness. The high priest is to be the Aaron and Aaron's descendants. But the Levites are to serve the priest. They're to help him out. They're to help out the high priests and and serve as kind of like lowercase priest, if you will. And they serve with all kinds of ideas or things in the in, that work that needs to be done in the tabernacle. So they had, again, their place, right? Their role. But you know what they did? They said, you know what? We want another role. We want the other role. And and then and so they they longed for that position that Aaron had as the high priest. Why can't I go into that that room, that special room where the that the Ark of Meeting is, that Ark of Meeting, that interesting Ark of the Covenant, right? That place, this the seat uh, of meeting, the place where God consumes the blood. Uh, all this they wanted that they wanted that place, that position, right? And and. Moses kind of gets at him. So I got to know my role. I got to know what I'm doing. I got to be blessed with where God's got me. Um, I, I can't try to, I don't want to have this envy, uh, which is just a horrible uh, heart, by the way. God, I hate when envy hits the heart, don't you? Uh, just You kind of look at people's blessings. You look at what they're doing and the goodness that's going on in their life, and you are in, you are not happy with it because you wish it was you. And you detest them because it's the goodness is happening to them. And oh man, envy is just a yucky, yucky uh, emotion that we have. 
uh, and, and really it enters into a, a behavior pattern too for us where we become really negative um, and, uh, and not very friendly at all. Um, in a sense, very manipulative. When I think of envy, I think of like manipulation, you know, and it just, it's just yuck, man. I, I pray God definitely work on me on that envy. Um, uh, that's not a good thing to have. And so it says, and Moses sent, uh, and let me just say this. Um, Paula says we should be happy for others and lift them up. That's right. And, and in a sense, I got to be happy uh, with where I'm at. You know, I, I, and, and I don't mean complacent, right? I don't mean like where, oh, like I'm never going to strive to get better at what I do or anything like that. But uh, the idea is I got to be able to be thankful, right, for what, where God ha does have me and for the roles that he's put me in and the influence that I do have. Uh, I might not have all the influence of that other person on YouTube, but I got some influence and praise God for that. You know, thank God for, for the little things that we got or the big things that we have or whatever it is. You know, we, we are to be thankful. God had put the Levites in a position and now they're grumbling and complaining. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Ab Abraham, the sons of Eliab, but they said, we will not come up. It is a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness that you should keep acting like a prince over us. Oh, man. Hear what these guys say to Moses. They said, hey, you brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, this is kind of how delirious we can get. Where we can we can be in a sense in our own uh, you know pigsty in our own yuck in our own you know mud puddle whatever you want to call it and not even know it. It's like this guy these guys forget they were slaves four hundred years in Egypt. What are you talking about, lamb flowing with milk and honey? You were a slave. You guys were literally taken taken captive by by the ruler of Egypt and the propaganda machine and they were using you and yet you say you were part of a land you came out of a land flowing with milk and honey come on Dethan come on Abraham sons of Eliab what are you guys thinking right and uh, they said we're not going to listen to you Moses right are you a prince over us <clears throat> what the that kind of idea right um, again, grumbling, complaining, but again, um, disillusioned, you know, disillusioned at the past, you know, oh man, that partying was so cool, man, remember all that great stuff, remember all this, remember all that, uh, are you really just, am I really just disillusioned by, by stuff, you know, was it really, was it really that good, was it really great, you know, those kind of things. Was it really good to get with my friends and do drugs and things like that? And, you know, was that really good? You know, and sometimes I got to think about that. And sometimes what hits me is when I think of nowadays where some of my friends or me myself, when I find issues in my life or issues in my friends' lives and they tell me about their issues and I see how it stems from when we were younger, you know, things that are not easily just thrown off, right? but stuff that sticks with you for a while. Then it kind of wakens me up and goes, hey, you know what, that, uh, let, me not, let me not talk about my past as, oh, it was a land flowing with milk and honey, right? Come on, no way. Because um, it wasn't, right? There was issues there and things that we did and uh, behaviors that we had that have stuck with us for a long time. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey. So they continue their kind of rant at Moses, nor given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Are you going to take out our eyes? Are you going to punish us? You know, um, you know, this kind of idea. Tina, I love what you say. Hey, the repercussions. God is our healer. That's right. And God can heal, by the way. God does do works in our life and 
And there's some things that continue on in our life and we see different behavior patterns that are there. And there's other things that God simply wipes away. It's amazing. Some things I look at and I go, wow, that was really easy. God just took care of it. Other things are, <coughs> are things that really I need to press into and work on and really, <coughs> really look at obeying God and really trusting God with everything. And it feels like, woo, here we go, you know, kind of thing. But yeah, God is our healer. Um, you know, what is, what is the, uh, uh, I was thinking God is our healer. That reminds me of, uh, yeah, Yahweh Rapha. That's what it reminds me of. Yahweh is our healer, right? <clears throat> I am Jehovah who heals you both in body and soul, in body by preserving form and, cur uh, and curing diseases, and in soul by pardoning iniquities, Exodus fifteen twenty six. That's right. So thanks, Tina, for bringing that up. That reminds me of that. So here we have a couple a couple people that knew Moses well. Man, friends come at you hard, right? Friends don't understand you. They, Again, everybody wants to be a lead, leader, but you can't have it that way. If everybody's a leader, no one's a leader. That's how it works. But these people want to. They, they don't want to stay in their role. They don't want to stay doing what they're doing. Uh, they're not trusting God in Moses. And sometimes when it comes to leaders, we're going to have to trust God in them. You know, I can't fix them. I can't control leaders. But I'm going to have to trust what God's doing in the leader's life. You know, and I'm going to have to I'm going to have to just trust the Lord and say, hey, Lord, uh, gosh, you work in that person's life. You work in that leader's life. Help me to obey you in in obeying them as your word tells me to do so. You know, as I do it unto you, you know, things that would be honoring to you. Of course, if it was something that was dishonoring to the Lord, then, hey, can't do it. Right. Because of the Lord we serve. But, uh, okay, so these guys complain about, hey, a lot of stuff. We didn't get into a land. You told us we're going to get into a land. Now we're going to be punished by you. You're going to poke our eyes out. Moses, you know, they again, they become irrational, right? And help me, God, not to be irrational today. It says, then Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, do not respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, nor have I hurt one of them. And Moses said to Korah, tomorrow you and all your company, and I love how Moses, by the way, says to the Lord, he's very angry, but he talks to God. Isn't that cool? Hey, God, I'm, I get very angry. Let me talk to you. And Moses says to Korah, tomorrow you and all the company be present before the Lord, you and, and they, as well as Aaron. Let each take a censer and put incense in it, and each of you bring his censer before the Lord, 250 censers. Whoa, that's a lot. 250 censers, both you and Aaron, each with his censer. And it says, uh, so every man took his censer, put fire in it, and said, uh, or laid incense on it and stood at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Wow, that must have been quite a crew at the tabernacle, quite a group. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So this is a huge little meet get up going on at the tabernacle. I wonder what the other tribes were doing. They're like, hey, dude, something's going on at the tabernacle of meeting. I mean, check out all the censers and the fire and what's going, you know, what's happening over there. It must have been quite a scene, right? Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Hey, get away from all these other dudes because I'm just going to consume them. You know, my, I'm going to come on the scene. My presence is just going to consume them. That's it. I will judge them. I will take their blood instead of the blood of an animal f uh, to cover over their sin. I'm just going to take their life you know, <laughs> and separate from yourself among this congregation. Then they fell on their faces. Now, I love that separation, by the way, the idea of separate, be separate from, be holy, be consecrated, right? Uh, sanctified, you know, those kind of ideas, those kind of cool church words just means separate, right? Be separated from them, you know? And it says, and they fell on their faces, uh, then they fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and you be angry with all the congregation? So the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the congregation saying, Get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Ab Abraham. Then Moses rose and went to Dathan and Ab Ab Arab. God, I can't even pronounce that one. Abri Abraham. Abraham, it looks like. And the elders of Israel followed him. 
And he spoke to the congregation, saying, Depart now from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. Hey, there's some passages in the New Testament, especially in the pastoral epistle, I think of one where it says, hey, don't lay hands on a person hastily or share in their sins. You get the idea that that's kind of maybe taken from this little section. It could be something that the, the, the rabbi Paul, Paul the apostle in the New Testament, when he was writing to Timothy in that book of 1 Timothy, that uh, uh, he was, you know, r- referring to this because this is the Bible that they read. Remember, this is the Bible of that the New Testament writers read all the time. And and hey, get away from the tents of Korah, you know. And it says, you know, don't even don't get away from those things. Then Moses rose and went to uh, them, and the elders of Israel followed. And he spoke to the congregation saying, depart now from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their all their sin. Very similar to the Timothy passage. I'm going to put a little note there just to uh, reference that one. It says, so they got away from around the tents of Korah, Dathan and Abiram. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of the tents with their wives, their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do these works, for I have not done them by my own will. Isn't that cool? These are This isn't something I've done by my own will. This is the Lord using me, you know. And, uh, hey, no problem about the, the angry emoji. Uh, no problem at all, uh, Tamara. So uh, Laura says, I'm guilty speaking from experience. <laughs> so... Yeah, we can probably relate to some of this contention here in the family uh, right now that's going on with Moses and the cousins. And uh, and so they got away, uh, or I read that one, verse 28. Then Moses said, by this you shall know the Lord has sent me to do all the works, for I have not that done them on my own will. A, a good underlining passage, right? It's God who's worked in Moses, right? And God works in us, too. Uh, God today, may you work in and through us. And it says, And these men die naturally like all men, or if they are visited by the common fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates a new thing, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the pit, then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. Hey, uh, you know, any miracle that's happened, Moses says, is not from me, man. It's from the Lord. The Lord does it. He says, if you guys die like a normal death, then certainly I'm, I'm no prophet. You know, don't listen to me. But you know what? If, if something radical happens, like the earth opening up and you kind of going through, a, what's it called? Like a sinkhole or, you know, where the ground just drops out from you. You know, gosh, that'd be scary, huh? Being in your home and all of a sudden just the, you know, the 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 land give way and you drop 40 yards, you know, down. Whoo, that'd be intense. Well, now it came to pass as he finished speaking these words that the ground split apart under them and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up and their households and all the men with Korah and all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the pit. The earth closed over them and they perished from among the assembly. Wow. So this is a miracle. This isn't, you know, this is something that Moses said, hey, now it could be a natural phenomenon in the world, but it, it certainly was a miracle at the timing of it. And Moses, that's what he said. Hey, if, if, if God's really using me, then it's going to be a miraculous thing. It's going to be something that's over the top. Just amazing. You know, and sure enough, this happens. And uh, then all Israel who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. Now, remember, they're complaining and they're grumbling against God and God, what God has established. God is going to live amongst the people. He is going to dwell with Israel. But Israel is not wanting it. They are fighting being with God. And they're complaining about God. They're complaining about his judgments. They're complaining about all kinds of things. They're complaining about the rulership, right? The food, the drink, just you name it. They are just in massive complaining mode. And they are not understanding that they do have a blessing, that they're having a blessing that's above everybody who walks on the earth, that they actually are going to be able to draw close to the creator. And But yet they certainly have passed over that 
and they've neglected it. They've taken, you know, prayer out of their, their schools. They've taken prayer out of their homes. You know, they've, you know, <laughs> you get the idea. They've removed, you know, they've, they've gone away. They've gone astray, right? They're not looking at God and saying, hey, God, you know, God, what a blessing to be around you. Instead, they're going, hey, God, well, gosh, if you're really God, why aren't you doing blah, 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 right? That's how we are as humans. Um, we have a fault to a T. We are certainly rebellious. And, uh, and so then all Israel who were around them fled at their cry, for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And then fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. So those offerings of incense that, you know, people were on the side of Korah, you know what? They were judged. And then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, you know, this is the this is the epitome of that that principle in the New Testament that says bad company corrupts good character. <laughs> bad company, right? They hung out with Korah, corrupted good character. You know, bad company corrupts good character, good morals, those kind of things, man. You hang out with it, you hang out with it, you're going to get it on you, right? Uh, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, tell Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, to pick up the censers out of the blaze, for they are holy, and scatter the fire some distance away. The censers of these men who sinned against their own souls. Wow, interesting. Sinned against their own souls. Let them be made into hammered plates as a covering for the altar, because they presented them before the Lord. Before, Therefore they are holy and they shall be assigned to the children of Israel. And so Eliezer the priest took the bronze censers, which those who were burned up had presented, and they were hammered out as a covering on the altar. Wow, they took all those censers and they hammered on these things and made a covering of the altar to be a memorial to the children of Israel that no outsider who is not a descendant of Aaron should come near the altar. Uh, to offer incense before the Lord and that he might not become like Korah and his companions just as the Lord had said to him through Moses. Wow. What a rough monument, right? Some people want to tear down monuments nowadays because they see a flaw in the person. Oh, that person was this. Let's tear it down. But you got to understand like nobody, nobody is perfect other than Jesus. You know, either we put up statues of Jesus everywhere, right? Because he's the only one perfect person. Or we keep the monuments that we have on the planet because they tell a story. They tell a story of the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's something to learn from the monuments, right? The monuments aren't there to say that person was amazingly the best person ever to live. No, they had flaws, they had issues, they had stuff going on. But there was something that it pointed to. Yeah, it's amazing. Someone will tear down one monument of a person because of one because of bad things that they did, and then they'll erect a monument of a person that they think is cool, but yet it still has a lot of bad qualities in their life as well. It's like the madness of it all, right? No, just look at what the monument stood for right? Yeah, it stands for something. And that's what the, this covering of the altar was to stand for. It was to remind people that, hey, God has leaders. God has arranged things. God has set things in order. God is in control. God knows, even in the latter days, when Satan and the Antichrist and all that and the beast is on, on its rampage of the world, right? The manipulation, the propaganda of the world, the massive uh, psychosis that the world will be under, you know, doing everything that big, you know, the big governments want want them to do. Everybody will be bowing down and saying, yes, 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 yes. Um, it says all of it is going to be under the control of God. God is using everything. God is not out of control. So, yeah, Paul says these monuments are part of our history and should be left alone. That's right, because they speak something, right? Just as this spoke to something, right? And, yes, there's things that are, that are rough in people's lives, and we know that. 
just think like we all got stuff in our life uh, everything you know some good some bad some yuck some good <laughs> you know how it goes so on the next day the congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron saying you have killed the people of the Lord wow now another complaint right you notice these people aren't for anything they just continually complain right hey what am I for what am I for or do people just know me as what I'm against? Or do people know what I'm for? You know, the people of Israel are stuck in this pattern of just being negative. Constantly, God, you're not doing this. God, you're not doing that. God, you're not doing this. God, where are you? God, you're not doing. Constantly that. Not, hey, you know what? We get an opportunity to serve God. Hey, there's an opportunity to learn about God today. Hey, you know what? What a blessing it is that we get to establish our tribes around the tabernacle. I mean, what other nation has this opportunity to literally see the presence of God? Like, may, you know, we don't know what the form of God, but there's this, this energy, right? Fire, light kind of thing. You know, w this is amazing. Instead of that, it's all what we don't like, all complaining. Gosh, help me not to be a person who is known for what I am against, but maybe what I'm for, you know. So cool, uh, Devo, a lot of good stuff there for us, right, to work on our own life. Uh, Paul says complaining gets us nowhere. We need to work with God and come up with a solution that's right. Uh, Laura says, yes, yeah, that's right. We are to learn from the good, bad, and ugly. That's so true, right? Absolutely. So, uh, Anyway, I think you guys enjoyed the Devo, a very cool chapter, and we'll kind of finish that one up and go into 17 because they kind of tie in together once again um, tomorrow, Lord willing, okay? Um, actually, I might not be in tomorrow, so if I'm not in tomorrow, it's because I got a busy one, but um, definitely Friday, we will be in the house of Devo. So you guys take care, okay? Bye-bye.